show, we're breaking the latest in AI news and why Apple's new headset is actually huge for AI, not just VR or AR. I'm your host, Kit Bodner, CMO at HubSpot, joined by my co-host, Kieran Flanagan, the CMO at Zapier. And this is Marketing Against the Green. Let's get into today's show. Kieran, the, the internet has exploded because Apple has released a V1 product for the first time in years. And there's a lot happening with the, the Apple Vision Pro headset. And I, I think I've got some takes. Before we break down all about the Vision Pro, I've got some takes that I think you're gonna like in a second. But the Vision Pro is Apple's entry into the headset game. And why I say headset game and not AR or VR is because one of the things I found very interesting as a marketer about this launch, Kieran, is that Apple is calling this headset a spatial computing headset. It right. intentionally didn't talk about augmented reality or virtual re reality. They're talking about it in, through the lens of spatial computing, which means, first and foremost, they are trying to define a new category that is sits above and is a superset of AR and VR, which I thought was super interesting. Before we even get into what the headset does, what's your take on spatial computing and Apple's choice to do that? I think there's two, two clear use cases. Like I'm actually the, we're all the target demographic for Apple, all of us who are kind of tech <laughs> nerds, but I'm like, completely in the wheelhouse because there's two things that I think they're trying to address right off the bat. And it's basically a mobile workstation. And I, for the most part, have always wanted to work remote, work remote. And then the second thing is a portable cinema, like a cinema for people who love movies. I think they're the two big things that they're trying to lean into. Like it's not for all the use cases, like they're two of the core use cases. If you looked at the videos and everything, they were the two that it was really leaning into. I think it's trying to remove itself from the kind of fun and quirky VR metaverse type direction that Mark Zuckerberg went down and Meta went down. And so I think they're trying to make sure there's clear differentiation between those two. I saw someone, and we can get this graphic, we'll actually put it up on the screen as we're talking about it, but I saw someone do a really good comparison where it was a side-by-side -side image of the avatar that was shown through oh, the hey, Apple hey, hey, VR headset. Oh, hey, do not steal my thunder. I got a big avatar did, point but, coming yeah, up. Yeah, but I'm not going to make an avatar point. This is more of the funny. Did you see the funny comparable where they showed the avatar that the Apple created and Mark Zuckerberg with the Eiffel Tower? <laughs> yes, yes, I did the side by side. It's like, really you, all you need it to know really about good. is like, who was winning this race is that one graphic. Like one of them, it looks like a 1980s cartoon and the other one looks like uh, something you'd expect to exist in the future. Yeah, Zuckerberg fit, spent $50 billion on headsets and Apple has totally leapfrogged them because Apple vertically integrated, you know, Aaron Levy from Box. Oh, did you see Aaron Levy's tweets? I didn't. So Aaron had a great tweet, which is, it's like every technology Apple has ever produced was prepared for Apple Vision. Operating systems, chip design, graphics, spatial audio, cameras, networking, payments, computer vision, and a massive developer ecosystem. Pretty impressive vertical integration. That is why Apple beat Facebook in the headset game is because they spent decades laying the groundwork for all the things that were going to be necessary to make this successful if it, if it is in fact successful. Yeah, they're just better at hardware. Yeah, they're, they're the best hardware company in the world. Meta spent 50 billion in the last couple of years on their metaverse, their VR and experience, and like <laughs> it's just a big, there's just a big uh, delta between these two things. And I know you have a take on like why this is an AI story. So maybe tell us why you think this is an AI yeah, story. Yeah, so, so before I'm going to give people the 30 seconds on the headset before we get into this. So the headset, the pros and cons are. I hear the eye tracking is amazing. There's no physical controllers. You just put your fingers together to click. So you'll look at an app, put your fingers together to click on that app. The Apple Vision Pro is like the first generation iPhone, which it shows you what's possible, but in practice has tons of limitations. It's heavy. It only has two hours of battery life. It's very expensive. I believe the reason they called it Apple Vision Pro is so that they can introduce a less expensive version in the future. Right, they're saying that this is the flagship expensive version. And what we'll likely see is a big jump from version one to version two in terms of 
weight improvements, battery improvements, all those things. Version one is just to show us what is possible with this technology. And it's not just hardware, it's software, Karen. And so what I wanted to show you and why I want you to get your take, if you agree that this is actually an AI story, is one of the things you talked about is on the Vision Pro, FaceTime is very interesting. I pu pulled up an article from The Verge here where on Apple Vision Pro headset, your FaceTime will turn you into a digital avatar. So we'll actually do a full scan of you and turn you into a visual avatar. See, you can see the video of this gift from Apple where it's gonna scan you and digitize you to be a avatar version of yourself on FaceTime. This, this feature is why Vision Pro is an AI blockbuster to me because it is going to condition an entire generation of consumers to talk to avatars in 3D video. We, Kieran, you and I on the show have talked about Oh, AI is coming for humans' roles in customer support, service, sales, all types of kind of customer-facing roles. For that to happen, we need to get comfortable interfacing with video avatars that look and feel like a human, but are represented by AI. And that was gonna be one of the biggest stop gaps. Apple is changing the game with this, with Vision Pro and FaceTime on Vision Pro. It's gonna to totally acclimatize everybody. It's not gonna do it tomorrow, but over the next three to five years, it's gonna change the societal norms around talking to a video avatar. Agree? I agree. Do you think, it, I think, do you think this I think is this the is... underrated huge story of this announcement? Because that's what I think. I think well, nobody's is, talking yeah, this about the... this and it's freaking huge. This is the future. Like people are going to be avatars in the digital world. I don't quite know why I want to answer my FaceTime as an avatar, but I suspect in the future, I probably do want to do that. And I agree. I think at some point when you have multimodality in an AI world, 2024, you can actually have most of your support interactions with a company done through avatars. This is the future we're moving in. It's been in every single sci-fi movie that's ever been created. Sci-fi movies are mostly accurate. And so Apple are going to be the company that moves us in that direction. Well, I can tell you, you brought up an important question. Karen, which is why would you want to answer the Vision Pro or answer FaceTime as a avatar? And to that, I'm going to show you one other thing that I think we got to share with everybody. You ready for this? What you're seeing here is a picture of Apple CEO Tim Cook standing next to the Vision Pro headset. He intentionally did not wear it. None of the Apple executives actually wore the headset on camera. Nobody is photographed wearing this headset. I saw that. Yeah. And why is that? Why is that? Because they don't want to be part of memes. And also, it kind of looks silly to be wearing this headset. So would you want to be in FaceTime with you wearing uh, a headset? Or would you want to be in FaceTime with you looking cool as an avatar? Dope. I that not is thought why about that. this is happening. I saw the story about none of the actual Connecting execs. Connecting the dots, the, man. I don't think it's good for the execs not to wear the headset on the large demo. Like... That is strange. Like, you know, you have the Steve Jobs with the iPhone, using the iPhone on stage. And the other cool thing about the VR system is it can tell you, like it switches back to the real world if someone is in your purview, in your eye view. So it actually is not too uh, cumbersome to, to wear. But I like that as a, hey, like you don't need to wear this thing. You don't need to look like you're wearing this thing when you're on calls. I think that is actually really smart. That is why they had to make the avatar. And that, Avatar is what's going to facilitate the adoption of us being comfortable interacting with AI in a kind of real-time video environment. These are major changes that are going to happen. Like, we're not going to hear talk about the features of this headset. We're here to talk about how it's going to change how people consume video and entertainment content. Kieran covered that right at the jump. And we have some unique takes around category design, the fact that they did spatial computing, as well as the avatar for FaceTime being the entry point into AI avatars that we all interact with on a regular basis. Bookmark this video. You're gonna come back to it in a couple of years and be like, man, those guys were right. They called it, they knew what was up. Now we're just all talking to avatars all the time. And maybe it's even faster than a couple of What a couple great feature. Years. Here, I wanna talk about one last okay, tweet please, that I saw please. that was super, super interesting on comparing this in terms of why it's relevant to what's happening in AI right now. And so it's Jason Fried, who's the CEO and founder of Basecamp. And yeah. I thought his was really smart, which is if you look at 
this graphic down here, what the Apple Vision Pro versus ChatGPT gives you very two distinct features that are very different from each other, right? So AI, what we've learned through natural language and ChatGPT is that feature is getting software out of the way, right? It's mm -hmm. actually getting UI out of the way and moving you to a natural language. And so you have a totally different way of interacting with the world just through kind of our voice, like just through natural language. And over time, that actually gets much more of all of the interfaces and everything we're used to further away from, how, from what we actually use. Whereas Apple Vision Pro is on the opposite end of that spectrum. Like it puts everything directly in your face every single minute of every single day. So one vision gets a computer out of the way. The other vision mounts a computer on your face. One vision is get it and go. One vision is get it and stay. I thought that was like a really interesting take. And like that is a good take. These two things move us in very different ways. Like, do, do I want to have a headset on my face and like click, still click things with my hands, like click, click, click? Or do I see a future where I can just have an assistant and I can talk to it and it can do everything I need it to do? And I think those two futures are very, very different. And I suspect at some point, maybe the- They'll merge at some point. Yeah, natural language gets integrated into what Apple are doing. Yeah, that, seem, that seems pretty obvious, but I, th I thought that was a really good take from Jason Fried. Okay, that is our contrary, non-popular takes on the Apple Vision Pro and what it's going to mean for society and business more than it is just going to be what it means for an end user actually just using the Vision Pro. Uh, you can go check out a ton of awesome videos all over the internet about just like what it's like to be a customer of that. We want to spend most of the time on the Vision Pro. It's the biggest story of the week. Please comment. In the YouTube video, do you agree with us? Disagree with our takes on the Vision Pro? What do you think? Are you going to buy the product at $3,500? That is a pricey, a pricey lot of headset. Saving up to do. A lot of saving up to do. A lot of saving up. That's why they're not releasing <laughs> until next year. You're giving everybody time it, to time save to their money, right? Save that money. Hope the stock market recovers. Everyone <laughs> can buy a Vision money. Pro with their money. Let's go. Are you going to get oh. one? Yeah. I, I haven't decided yet. I haven't decided. What about you? I would buy it because I think the movie experience will be great. But like yeah. you have two hours patch your life. You can't even really watch a you movie. Gotta, you so. It's basically got to be plugged in. It's definitely yeah. a V1 product. I, I, I'm V1 debating product. whether I will buy it or wait till the V2. So, I might wait I just the V2. The V2 cycle might be two or three years is my only concern. So I just don't see me wanting the mobile workstation. I don't know why I want to sit here with a, with a headset for two hours and click things with my hands. Like, I don't know why I think Yeah, I'm not cool. sure about the real utility at launch. We'll see as the developer ecosystem, the apps and everything get custom built for it, what it's actually like and what the utility looks like. But I think it's going to take a little while. Three but, to five years. Yeah, I, I think that's the right call. All right, this has been Marketing Against the Grain. Please hit subscribe on YouTube and we'll be back with you real soon. This data is wrong every freaking time. Have you heard of HubSpot? HubSpot is a CRM platform where everything is fully integrated. Whoa, I can see the client's whole history. Calls, support tickets, emails, and... Here's a task from three days ago I totally missed. HubSpot. Grow better.